Yeah. All right, we're good. Yeah. All right, well, let's get started. I'm, uh, I'm Jesse, I'm the Microsoft Campus Rep. I'm Ryan, I'm the Secretary of the Gate of Elk Club. You didn't know that. Uh, do you want to show the music? Okay. Um, Make sure you speak up so the camera can catch you. Yeah. Today we're doing Contract 2. Uh, Contract 2 is really good if you're looking to get into making games. Um, as you'll see, we're not even going to touch a single line of code. Um, just kind of like select from a menu and then it does it for you, which is nice. And all of this comes out as like logic stuff, which we know from math, so don't worry about it. Um, Contract 2 primarily makes uh, HTML5 games, which is for, the web, for websites. Um, it can also port to a lot of different um, consoles, uh, Wii U, as well as like others like that. Um, but you need the kind of pro license for that, which is $130, I think, which we'll make you pay for because it's free version and we can do a lot of stuff with free version. So, yeah. I think we're good to go. Sweet, let's get started. So, first thing is start a new project. Um, oh, wait, wait. I wanted to point out one thing. Um, so Concert Crew is really great, and they really keep up with the times. There's actually a standard, like a template, that is for Flappy Bird. If you want to make your own Flappy Bird game, it sets you up perfectly for it. Yeah, they have quite a few templates on that. Yeah, they have like a template, they have like examples. So like if you want to learn something more, there's a lot of really good examples out there, like how to use like Concert Crew to its full potential. So yeah, what the world needs. And we're about to start, oh yes. Uh, you can do a UMT project, or you can choose if you want 16 by 9 or 4 by 3. I'm just going to do a new project. Um, so you basically have two layouts. This is the layout. Um, or you have two, two pages. This is the layout page, and then you have the event sheet. And this is where all the code or logic yeah. is going to be. So if we start the layout, the first thing is we have to resize the background. What, when you run the program, what shows up is this dotted line here. So if we just resize, go to, it's in the, this layers down here, and then layer zero, and that pops this, where is it not in there? It's in the left. It's not parallax, is it? Uh, no, it's right here. Yeah. If you just yeah. click on the layout, it's, Layout size. So we're going to do uh, 640 by 480. And you can see it's still a little off, but we're just going to go with that. And then if you go over to Layout tab and click on your layout, Layer 0, uh, I'm going to change my background color to black. Now we're in space. Just to do that. And then, uh, if you ever want to add anything to your layout, go to Projects, and then all your characters or whatever are underneath Object Type. Why is it? Blue? <laughs> I get you five of them. Object types, so all your objects will be monsters and players. Let's create a new one, and there'll be a sprite. And name it player. If you're familiar with GameMaker, um, GameMaker does some two steps. First, you have to make a sprite, and then you make an object, and it adds that same sprite to that object. This is kind of doing that just in one step. So don't get confused if you don't know what a sprite is, it's just a picture. So now we have our player, let's throw them in the in the world also. And then it, it's going to pop this up so you can draw your player real quick. I'm just going to make mine uh, a little bit red this time. So one thing I want to say about this, um, the editor is not that good. However, you can link an editor 
to kind of open up automatically when you're using time trick tools, like if you're going to Photoshop or GIMP or Paint, even you can just link it up really nicely. You don't really need to like save it in Paint and then open it up here. You can do that, but it kind of keeps you the tools to do all in one. <laughs> also, make sure your player is facing to the right because what we're going to do soon is use the angle of the object and the object default, or the angle of default to zero is right. That's how unit circles work and with that for math. So make sure it's going to the right. And also, if you kind of have extra space around your character, click on this little square with a slash to it. That'll actually crop your image because if you have extra space, it'll look like your player is not hitting an asteroid, but it'll still take damage. Yeah, and if that makes your object disappear, it's still there. Yeah, the editor kind of does that sometimes. If it like, if you ever modify your sprite and it like kind of disappears for a second, just like close it and open it again. It's still there, I promise. Cool. So that's that. You can just exit out of it and have it saved. So now you can see it, the player is right there, mm -hmm. the object types. And let's give it a couple behaviors. So if you right click on it and go to behaviors, we're going to add wrap. And custom movement. So behavior is really cool because it kind of does the coding for you. Like the one we just added was wrap. Basically, that means if it goes up left, it'll come back on the right. We couldn't do that with like coding logic, but why do it when it's just there with the click of a button? Exactly. Behavior is cool. What was the second one you added? Sorry. Uh, custom, custom movement. Custom movement. Custom movement. We'll do that to kind of give the feel of like the thrusters and asteroids because right. you'll keep going. You don't stop. So we edit those and let's also resize our player in the world. <coughs> we'll put them in the middle. So I have our player. Can't really do much though. Yeah. So if you play this, it'll just show this and won't do anything, which is great if you want to do like um, an auto game or abstract idea, I guess. But for most purposes, this is not a game. <laughs> so, there it is. There's our game in our current working form. Yeah, you can run the layout to see. Can you upload files as the sprite instead of using the in program sprite? Yeah, if you actually um, yeah, click on your player, double click your editor, um, you can open file as well. All right, so let's add some movement to the controller player. So we're gonna have to add a keyboard, which is an object type. So if you right click on it, insert new object, and choose keyboard. Also, there's things like gamepad and touch, and like, there's some other like accelerometer stuff. So like, I also mentioned that this can port to other things. Like if you're porting to like a phone or something, um, then touch would be what you would do instead of a keyboard, because there's no keyboard on iPhones that are accessible, I guess. So yeah, but keep out, keep out, keyboard works for now, since we are on computers. So now that we have our keyboard, let's go to the event sheet. So this is where we're gonna add all the events. And click add new event, and let's map out some controls. So choose keyboard. Um, when key is down underneath keyboard, I'm going to do W A S or W A D for uh, spinning and going forward. You guys can choose what you want. So this is going to be used to move the player forward and then rotate. Um, right. Under add event, where is that option? Sorry. Uh, we're on the event sheet now. Yeah. Uh, so about the add event, and this is in the keyboard one. Click on did the keyboard. Add, did you add the object for keyboard? Um, oh, I have to add a keyboard object? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so right click on your object types. So new, then it'll be input, or it'll be input. It'll be input. Keyboard, yeah. Keyboard. Yeah. Keyboard. Okay. If we're going too fast, just let us know. Um, add D. <coughs> And I'm also going to add space because that's how I'm going to want to shoot, but I won't be able to do anything with it yet. And that's that you don't want it when it's keyed down for that because then it'll just if you hold down the space bar, it's just going to continuously shoot. So 
So for that one, I'm going to do Auntie Pressed. That's kind of a way to like limit the player shooting. If you just hold it down, you're making like 60 bullets a second, which you could make a game like that, but it's not very fair. It's not very difficult. So I have to actually match the keyboard, which is super fun if you're sitting to someone just matching the keyboard. So let's add some actions. For the W, we're going to do the player. We want the player to go forward. Uh, and that's accelerate. Accelerate toward an angle. Remember, for acceleration, I do I 200. And then for angle, player dot angle. So we just chose a value of 200. Um, you will kind of have to play around with it. It just depends on the size of your player and the size of your asteroid. It's all comes down to scale. Uh, we found sort of works pretty well with us, though. And as for angle, this is player dot angle. Since we called our object player, that just gets the current angle it's facing, I guess. So if it's facing that way, go that way. Accelerate that way. And then for A and D, you want to add uh, rotate. And it is going to be rotate counterclockwise. And angle do be like I want to say ten. So basically, as long as A is down, we're just going to rotate ten degrees counterclockwise, and then vice versa, ten degrees clockwise for easy clockwise. So this will kind of modify our player dot angle. So when we actually do go forward, that will flatten that angle we have as the player. And that's also why I wanted to go right because if it was going left, it would kind of go backwards. Yeah, it's kind of spinning a little fast, so I might go back in five. And then as you can see, the guy just kind of goes on forever. Yeah, there's, there's no friction space for anything, so I guess it's going forever. I guess. But yeah. we will add something to slow it down. So that just gets nauseating. It will just accelerate forever and never slow down. So that is. So, yeah, so the add drag to kind of like slow down the person over time. I think it's on their system, right? Yep. It's on your um, space. And that is under every tick. Every tick you want it to the player to see the slow down. Custom movement behavior. So that's gonna be accelerate under player. And instead of doing a positive acceleration, just do a negative. I'm going to do negative 30. And I'm actually going to change my uh, angle to 5. <coughs> now, if you really want to try it, <coughs> uh, how do you slow down the under the system? Every under time? system, every tick. And then you want to, for add event, you go to player and accelerate. And it's going to be selected as forward right away. And so you can just do forward negative 50 or I did negative 30 this time. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Did you have the direct? Yep. Yeah. Um, you used every team for that, right? Yep. Uh, so every take just means like every frame, if you're familiar with that term. Um, I believe contract to default is 60 frames per second, so this will be updated 60 times a second. Um, that could change depending on obviously lag in the computer, but I think it's pretty constant around 60, or it might be 30, around one of those two values you can get. Uh, so next, let's add the bullet so that we can actually use space. So that's going to be a new object type. So if you go right click on object types, insert new object, and do you have a bullet? Um, yeah, that's right. Is it a square? Okay. So I'm going to name it bullet and give it some behaviors. Oh, let's actually, let's actually then rob the reverse. Color. 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 Uh, white. White is it? White is it? Uh, so right now we're using another uh, sprite object. This is going to be for the bullet, so just draw a circle. Um, as I said, this editor wasn't very good. There's actually no 
circle tool. So have that fun, I guess. Remember your dumb crop again. So let's add it to the layout. If you just drag it from the object types to here, you can resize it, and we're going to actually keep it off, off of the layout, outside of the layout. So when we're actually pressing space, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be generating these bullet objects. Um, to actually generate objects, one already has to be in the scene somewhere, or else it doesn't know how big to make it, which is why we put it kind of off screen. We just never see it, it's there but it's just there so the computer knows, hey, I'm going to make this this big. So now let's add some behaviors to the bullet. If you right click on the bullet, go to behaviors, we're going to make it a bullet, which makes sense. Yeah. And we also want it to destroy once it gets outside of the layout. So that's called destroy outside of the layout. Very general. And that's just there, so once the bullet comes to the stage, we don't have a million bullets just randomly plugging up our system. It's just there for like memory, I guess. Alright, how's everyone doing so far? When I turn the rock, when I turn the ship. Yeah, <laughs> the sprite kind of like space, but it rotates like that. Uh, um, you probably. Under custom movement, there's a there's a rotate clockwise also, and that one makes it do that. So it's don't use the custom movement clockwise, clockwise. Yeah, do the, do the very first one. Add some events for the bolt. We're going to do oh, just to it on created. Uh, that was in um, event. Yep. And then on created, we want to set the bullet speed. Under ooh, which one? <laughs> bullet. Bullet. Okay. And let's set it to 200. So we have an event that says every time a bullet is created, let's do something with it. So every time a bullet is created, we're just like, all right, just start going forward at 200 units, I guess. Which might seem fast, but keep in mind that we also need 200 for our player, so it all balances out. And we're also going to set the angle when it's created. So do another action for the bullet. And Set angle. And that one's going to be player dot angle also. But what that does, it kind of rotates the angle of the bullet, so it's kind of shooting from the player, not like there's just a random horizontal bullet kind of traveling in odd distances. Oh, and actually, it's set angle of motion under bullet. Is it? Yeah, I don't, set angle might work. And y is going to be player.x and player.y. And it's just saying, all right, the player's here, we'll get a bullet, go from there. Pretty self explanatory. And if you 
did not call your object player, you might call it something else. I think we call it sprite. So you might have to do like sprite.x for it to work. So you can go ahead and test that. So now we have bullets that shoot out of the player. We can move, we slow down, we move back to the bullets, like that Superman. Yeah, that's looking a pretty good game so far, but where did the challenge? This is not Microsoft Flight Sim, sorry. <laughs> so let's add an asteroid. Another object. Right, and I'm going to call it asteroid. So I'll go ahead and draw that as you want. So let's add, again, some behaviors to the asteroid. And I'm just going to give it wrap so that when it goes off the screen, it comes back up to the side. And then let's add some events for the asteroids. So I'm going to add an event for the asteroids. Or, yeah, when it's created, to give it its initial value. And on creating, we want to set the angle of motion to whatever, some random angle. So once that asteroid is created, it's going to go in some random direction. And the way we do that is we type in random, and then we pick a number between 0 and 59. Random, uh, parentheses, zero, comma, 359, and um, That's just the program's way of saying, all right, I'm picking a number between zero and 359, and we'll just set that as our angle that we're going to go. Probably the most coding we'll have to do all night, so I'll put a new tool there. Any other questions? Yep. yep. Uh, so with each take, we have a negative acceleration of the player? Yep. So if I just sit there, he actually just speeds up backwards. That's right, we had that. Yeah, I um, Is there like a way to check? It is. It, it's, uh, it decreases the speed of movement. towards something else. Like just play so like it play. does decrease its forward movement, but once it stops, it keeps saying you're going. That it yeah, just go get forward. Okay, so let's see what you got. Oops, hold right. Hey, there we go. Oh, right now. Yeah. Yeah. So did you guys get it in the back? What do you guys need help with? Um, <coughs> moving the, rotating the track.
triangle and created the uh, bullet? Yeah. Okay. So so let's do that. Right. Yeah. Can you talk about that one? Yep. What's up? Can you get the bullet over to the player? So arms are created. Give the bullet arm created. So give up the board. I got the right to the right. Give this part horizontal. Okay, so the bullet on You go ahead and add an event right down here and choose the bullet and on And once you get this block, then you can add events right here. And so you want to add the set bolt speed. Set And those are going to be under the bullet. Once you have the event, you can add the action, which our action is going to be. Uh, we want the asteroid to destroy. And also, we want the bullet to destroy. Set basically, and so I'm going to do element, asteroid, and is overlapping again, and choose the player this time. So when that happens, we're going to add a couple actions. We want the player to go back to the center, so I'm going to do set position. And I'm going to put it back in the middle, which we chose 640 by 480, so 320 by 240. stop, or when it goes back to the center, if you're moving when you hit the asteroid, it's going to have, still have that velocity, so we want the player to set speed to zero. And also the end.
might be in a How do we set the speed for the asteroids? Um, we do that every tick. Oh yeah. Okay. We change the vision. Every tick. Wait, you change the That'll slow it down. Every tick, what? <laughs> what is, wouldn't that be on creating? Wait, what are we doing? Uh, asteroid speed. Asteroid oh, speed. Set speed to zero. And try that out. <coughs> so, yep, there you go. I forget the asteroid movement thing. Asteroid movement is in every tick. Move the asteroid forward one piece. Just raise your hand and run through. How do you get the uh, asteroids to rotate on the center axis, not like on <coughs> as an object? On the. So basically, that has it to move and it's rotating, but then it's just going in a circle. How can I get it to rotate on the like, center? Mine's got to go to your spring. <laughs> oh, it's quite not getting Alright, so we got our asteroid. Oh, what do you really do? We got our collisions. So I think we're ready for other asteroid sizes. So something really, really nice about all these is if I want to make a of an asteroid a small size, I can just choose these two events, do copy, and then paste them. Oh, you know what? I screwed that up in the back. I'm actually going to go to the asteroid object, right click on it, and you can clone it. And then you get the same object with all the behaviors. So I'm just going to rename it to uh, medium asteroid. I'm going to clone it again. And name it small. So now we need all three. We're going to copy those and paste them. Do you know what it means if it does that? If it like goes underneath. Uh, uh, it doesn't. Like it doesn't matter. It's just order. Like. Or like if it goes like this. How do you paste them? If it goes like this. Control F, B. It's kind of like a game statement. Is it? So it's the same like this and this. Oh, yeah. You get like sub levels. So now for each one of those, we're just going to switch them to uh, 
the medium asteroid and small asteroid. It's kind of annoying that to go into <coughs> detail ball and do medium. It saves the settings though. So if you have all of your large asteroids that work in, basically it's just moving into different objects. If you're familiar with the concept of like parenting and programming, that's kind of what this is, except um, it's called Families in Contour 2, and it's not the free version. So this is what we have to work with, I guess. But it works fine. It's just a little bit tedious. You gotta be careful and make sure that the events or the actions inside the events are gonna yep. be you creating the actions. You change the actions or events, but now it's gonna change for yep. the actions. It will happen, and now basically, if you touch a medium or a small, only the big ones are gonna destroy, which is bad. But it's really fun to watch, actually. Size the medium and small. Yeah. <clears throat> Feel free to change like the sprites too, but not necessary. As you can tell, it's based off the sizes of them. We don't have movement on our medium and small. And our big one. Oh, yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah. Not that. So they kind of sit there. Oh, yeah. You got to go to your system for every tick and add them there. Yeah. You can just copy and paste again. System every tick. That's where we actually move our things forward. <coughs> you just copy and paste those there, but just change what they're working for. Go ahead and test it. Now I'll try it again. Now we can see they're moving. <coughs> Must have done a lot, so that's okay. And if we kill the small one, it should die. Or try I guess I should probably one. test it. Yeah, try to kill things. Get better. There we go. And they kill us, so that's good. Yeah. We can kill them, they can kill us. All fair. Life is good, I guess, in space. Alright, so we got our medium and small asteroids. So now let's actually add it so that when we destroy a big asteroid, it makes two small, medium ones. When we destroy a medium one, it makes two small ones. So what, that's going to be when the asteroid is overlapping the bullet. I'm going to add an action. And this is going to be for medium asteroid. Or actually, no, it's in system. system. And create objects. So in our big asteroid, every time we pull the bullet, we're just going to create one or two of the smaller kind, basically. So we'll make so X position is going to be the asteroid. Dot X. And asteroid. Dot Y. Construct is really smart in knowing that if a bullet is hitting an asteroid, it knows exactly which asteroid it's hitting, which is why this will work. And it just won't pick a random of the big asteroids to use. It'll pick that when you're hitting. It's super useful. And let's do that twice. Copy paste that. Now every time we kill a big one, we got two medium ones. And let's do the same do it for the medium. This 
time it's medium asteroid dot x and medium asteroid dot y. Go ahead and test that out. Oh, let's actually copy and paste that first two of them. And test it out. As you can see, we kill the big one, we kill the medium ones, we kill the medium one, we get the small one, and if we kill the small one, it just goes away as it should. So now this has a little more difficulty as or a lot more asteroids flying at you now. And they all get their own random position. That's the beauty of the on-trade event. The second they're created, they just get their random position and speed, or they're ever taking get their speed. So, we don't need to do that individually for each time. So we got our game working. So that's a pretty good game, I would yeah. say. Yeah. You can die, you can win, you can kill things, I guess I'm not winning, but it'll just be you in space, so I guess you can call that winning. But yeah. Asteroids. That is asteroids without the actual game scoring, I guess, part in lives. Yes, we can so add segue. Them. Let's add some scoring lives. And is is everyone at this point? Yeah, how's everyone doing? Feel free to raise your hand, I'll come help you. Who wants me? Everyone does, I know, but only one <laughs> at a time, please. Alright, just raise your hand, I'll come over if you need anything. Alright, so to keep track of lives. And your score, we're going to add some instance variables. So those, we're going to keep those in the player. So if you click on the player, and over on the left, the properties, instance variables is right here. So go you, can also, you can also right click and do instance variables the same way you did behaviors, it's just right above that. So we're going to make lives. It's going to be a number, an initial. We're going to do three lives to start. Add a description if you want. <clears throat> and then also score. Also numbers, starting at zero. So now we have to display this somehow, so we're going to create another object. And this time we're going to do text, which is right two over from the sprite. And I'll name it scoreboard. Be sure to drag it down. Our score or score is gonna be on one line and last gonna be another line. It actually doesn't have enough room, just won't show one of them. So make sure to drag it down so there's enough space. And then if you notice under properties on the left, it's black text, which I did not figure out last night. I spent a while figuring out why my text wasn't showing up. So change your text color so you can see it. I'm gonna do white. We have text. Easy as that. And then, uh, how do you edit it again? Is it under event? Event yeah, every tick. So if you want to just have it be like a text box that doesn't change, um, there's a text <coughs> field over here that you can just put in. However, we don't want a constant live and score for the entire game. So instead, now we're gonna go to every tick. This is kind of updated continuously, even though it might not change between every tick. So we're going to add it. So yeah. add action, scoreboard, and we're going to set the text. And the format you have to do is in quotes is literally written, and then and operator concatenate. So that's yeah. all right. Yeah. And then uh, you can do variables like player. Is it player dot? Yeah, so score. Yeah, score is going to be in quotes because that's a string. And then end the quote, and we're going to use ampersand to kind of put two things together. I guess. And we're going to add player dot score. You'll notice that there was a little green thing saying 
soon find that it wasn't a variable. So now we have score and player score, and that will just basically show up as it is. Now we're going to do another ampersand because we have to keep on adding them, and we're going to do we're going to type a new line. It's one word, new line. It should show up. Yep. And what that does is, as it sounds, it makes a new line. If you're, yeah, that's what that does. And then same thing, except now instead of doing score, we're going to do lives. We just type in live as a string, and then end it with player dot lives. Test it. Shows up. Yeah. And oh, we didn't add. Yeah. Score is zero, last three. three. Doesn't matter if we yeah. score. We yeah. didn't add. Anything. If you didn't add anything, it's just there. No. So. <laughs> Great game. So that's going to be in the event sheet. And when you lose a life, when you're overlapped. So that's going to be under the asteroid is overlapping player. So the three, whenever the asteroids are touching um, the player, we're just going to set the score. And I believe it's on the player. Yeah. And there should be a section for instant variables, so we're going to do subtract from lives and one. And so you might be able to just copy the paste. You can just copy the paste. Just like that. And then we also want to add score every time the bullet is overlapping an asteroid. So that's going to be under one of the asteroids is overlapping bullet, add action, under player again. Instance variables, we're going to add to score this time. And I'll do 100. Yeah. Feel free to get creative with the different asteroid sizes and scores. Some are the harder, uh, little ones are harder, so if you want to get more points, go for it. It's your game. If you want to judge you too hard, can you give 9,000 points for the big asteroid? I'm actually giving 50 for the medium and some large. So that's that. If you run it, the score should work. I can see you're getting points. You're also dying a lot, but that's normal. <laughs> See our bug is when we're being overlapped by an asteroid at our starting position. Yeah. So what happens there is we're just kind of sitting there and it's overlapping for for quite a while, as you can see. So it's just subtracting one every tick that it's overlapping, which is quite a few. And a way to fix that, I guess, we we'll just check to see if you've already died in the last. Like just have like a kind of. Uh, invincible time period, like five seconds or something. I think it's actually how the real asteroids does it as well. To give you time to like, escape from that happening. So yeah, you can now play a game. We have a working full game. He's being lame and not moving around. He's just in the middle, which I guess is the way to play asteroids. Yeah, but, I that for you. I, yeah, I taught him that. <laughs> so, I think there's still one up there. Yeah. Our bullets don't wrap, so you can't shoot over the screen. There we go, we filled them all. That's right, we got a score of 2,300. We lost 195 lives, but it was worth it. So, well done. That is now a game you can now be part of. That's pretty much how asteroids works. Like, that's really all it is. It's just rotating, shooting. Asteroids are created when you destroy them. Um, aside from going to a new level, this is asteroids. This is what they made, like, 30 years ago. Oh, well done. You're now a piece of history. Yeah. All right. Any questions over anything else? Yeah, if you guys want help getting this far, just let us yeah. know. And then we also have prizes. And we're doing a raffle? Or what are um, we're just throwing them out? I don't know. One thing about this, though, um, since this is, this is a very basic idea to start with, I guess, 
Um, it's a good place to start. You can add a lot more things like look into moving to a new level or like restart the level when you clear them all. Like have you like memorize it and make sure like okay if you if your lives is under zero just print like you lose and then start the game over stuff like that you can really have a lot of fun with this you can do whatever you want with it this is just the basis of asteroids and there's been a lot of asteroids clones over the years and they still kind of like build on it and they do their own thing so I can't really necessarily call them clones but it's the basic idea so do with this what you want um, and then I'll say it on congregate if you post it there. <laughs> Please post this game. Everyone go right now, upload this exact game to Congregate. We'll plug the server or something. <laughs> right. I mean, like, people still upload to the site? Like, holy crap, Ooh. we can't handle this. <laughs> 30 new users, oh! <laughs> all right. Two thousand six all over again. Yeah. All right, but any questions on that whole workshop, I guess? If not, great. If we lost you, I'm sorry. Um, this whole workshop is recorded, so you can do it again and again and again if you want to. Just make 10 asteroid games in a row. It's super fun. Impress your family, your friends. Yeah, who likes it? Who likes Construct 2? Yeah. How do you feel about Construct 2? It's pretty easy. Like, it's cool. No, I like Construct 1. I like that. <laughs> I like that it mainly ports to uh, HTML. Yes. It's all, I'm sorry, it's not what really port these days. So. It's just death. Yeah. It produces. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. So if you guys have personal websites, like this would be really clever to like if you embedded this into their website. Cause yeah, uh, mm -hmm. I'm assuming that for younger guys, if you want, like also for a crowd say if you're looking for jobs, make a website. People like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You have like your resume, some portfolio stuff, and then just like make a gaming contract and stick it on there. That could be really cool. Yeah. Portfolio cool. Yeah. Good. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, make sure that you say two games too. <laughs> Just put water in there. Yeah, two your games. Put a credit screen in. That's how you know. You yeah, yeah. That, that's the most important part of a game. I don't tell us about why they're wrong. Credits are most important. Uh, yeah. Well, that's all I got. So I'll let you do the giveaway. So I'm trying to think how we can do a wrap. Q right on? Um so we have a I got what do we have today? We got two speakers and Good. five of these. What are, what are those? These are uh, USB, portable USB. Portable USB. Oh, we can stop the camera. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. I was going to give us that. Chicka, chicka, chicka. And scene.